Chapter 4. The Widow's Walk. Jill awoke the next morning with sunlight and the salty scent of the sea drifting through the open window at the side of her bed. She had fallen asleep in the car on the way to Winterhaven and barely remembered climbing the stairs and dressing and flopping down on the uh, flopping onto the down quilt. She rolled over and was startled to see a huge brown and black striped cat curled up at her feet. It stretched out its front legs, yawned, and gazed at Jill through half-closed yellow eyes. My goodness, who are you? Jill asked. You look more like a raccoon than a cat. The cat yawned and purred, then rubbed its long, silky body against Jill's outstretched hand. Taking a deep breath of sea air, Jill got up on her knees and looked through the window. Beyond the rocky, rocky coast, the Atlantic Ocean sparkled in the sunlight, and its colors shifted from deep sapphire blue to smoky shades of green and gray. Jill unpacked her suitcases. The clothes she brought looked lost in the large closet and bureau. Maybe she and Nana would go shopping in nearby Bayswater someday soon. She pulled on her slacks, which she had tossed on the chair the night before. After dressing, she headed down the stairs to the kitchen. The cat jumped off the bed and ran ahead of her, holding its bushy tail straight up. I see you met Sarge. He's a real Maine Coon cat, Nana explained. Folks used to think these cats were half raccoon. He sure looks like it. Jill bent to stroke the cat who rubbed against her legs. He slept with me. He's a love. He's a tough guy, Nana called her. That's why I named him Sarge. Other cats don't dare tangle with him let me tell you. And don't be surprised at what he may drag in from outside. He's quite the hunter. Nana set out a folded newspaper on the floor by the sink and put some chicken scraps onto it. Sarge burrowed his face into the meat, pausing now and then to lick his whiskers. Nana, Mom said she'd send a telegram when she got to Newfoundland. It may be difficult for her. Where she's going, there aren't any telephones or electricity. Where do you get the mail? In the mornings, but it's still early yet. Jill nodded. I suppose she hasn't had time to write, anyway. Regular mail would be very slow, Jill. Everything coming in to the country must be opened and read by censors. Besides, if anything had happened to the caribou, we'd have heard by now. I'm sure she made it across the gulf safely. Try not to worry. Jill wasn't only concerned about the gulf and the U-boat. She wanted to know that Mom wasn't upset with her that she forgave her for acting so mean. And Jill also wanted Mom to know that she had forgiven her for leaving without her. Your dad called late last night to make sure you got here safely, Nana said cheerfully. There's a three-hour difference between here and California. Since the war started, servicemen and military bases have priority to use phones for long-distance calls, so civilians must wait their turn. By the time he finally got through, I didn't want to wake you. He sent his love and said he'd try to call sometime next week. Nana put her hand on Jill's shoulder. But now you have a surprise. I do? Look at what I found on the porch this morning. Nana pointed to a small table by the window. In the center was a terracotta vase containing a bouquet of bright summer flowers. Oh my goodness, Jill said. Just look at all the roses, snapdragons, and daisies, and those little white things. Baby's breath, Nana laughed. So there's a card attached. I didn't open it, but I did see that it's addressed to Miss Jill Winters. The message on the card was written in green ink. Jill read it aloud. Welcome to Winter Haven, Jill. Have a happy vacation. She looked at her grandmother. Who do you suppose they're from? I can't imagine. They're beautiful. Jill sniffed the flowers. Nana placed a box of che cheery oats on the large oak table. I thought you'd like to try this new cereal if you, if you haven't had them yet. She handed Jill a plate of toast with honey. Since real butter is rationed, I only use it for Sunday dinners. She wrinkled her nose. I don't like that oleo margarine stuff. Even with the orange food coloring they gave you to whip into it, it reminds me of lard. Jill was still wondering who sent the flowers as she opened the box of Cheerios and uh, emptied it along with some milk into a bowl. What time does the tea room inn open? The tea room opens at 2, uh, said Nana. Wendy's Aunt Adri will probably have vacation or staying there soon. Along with the war, I'm not sure if she'll get too many guests. Who would be coming way up here to vacation? Folks are saving up their gas stamps for vacation. 
Others are taking trains, as you did. The town tries to keep things as normal as possible. They were thinking of canceling the annual 4th of July clam bake for the duration, but decided to have it after all. That's next Saturday. I can hardly wait. I've never been to a real clam bake. Jill spooned cereal into her mouth, then stopped. Nana was reaching across the table for her hand. We need to remember we're at war. Even though we're in a beautiful, peaceful place, if we put your parents in the Lord's hands each morning, you won't need to worry so much. Embarrassed, Jill swallowed her mouthful of cereal, then bowed her head. Lord, please watch over our loved ones in this time of war. Please bring our dear Katie home safely, home safely to us. Keep my son Drew in the palm of your hand as he shares his gift of song around our country. We pray for peace in our world and love for one another. Amen. Nana squilled, squeezed Jill's hand, then let it go. Jill didn't speak during breakfast. Nana's prayer brought a sense of solemnity, and even Sarge, who sat on another chair, seemed subdued. His golden eyes half closed. Nana had put Mom and Dad in the Lord's hands, and maybe Jill could let go of her worries for today, like Nana said. After breakfast, Nana took Jill through the house. I love this place, she said proudly, but you haven't seen the best part. Come with me. Jill followed her grandmother upstairs and down the hallway. Sarge trotted along behind them. Wait until you see this. Nana opened a door, revealing a steep stairway. Come on. Nana climbed to the top, then unlatched and shoved open a heavy trap door. Cool sea air swept through the passageway, and Sarge darted ahead to the opening above them. Nana climbed out, and Jill scrambled after her onto an open porch that was encircled with a balustrade. What a beautiful view! Jill exclaimed. The ocean glimmered to the east. To the south was a channel from the sea to the safe harbor of Winter Haven. On the other side of the channel, a rocky point jutted out even farther into the ocean, and on its easternmost cliff stood a majestic white lighthouse. To the west, Jill could see a winding road, a church steeple, and the houses in town. Ocean swells flung white foam against the northern rocky cliffs that were fringed with pine trees. Pine trees were everywhere, and at times their fragrance overpowered the scent of the sea. No wonder Maine was called a pine tree state. In olden days, the wives of ship captains would come up to these roofs and watch for their husbands return from sea. Nana spoke loudly over the sound of the wind. Many times wives waited and watched, and the ship never returned. That's why it's called a widow's walk. And then, of course, the wives would help. Sorry, the wives would watch these uh, balconies for the Kelpies. What are Kelpies? You don't know. A Scottish legend tells that a Kelpie is a black horse with blazing red eyes. It would arise from the ocean and warn sailors' wives of disasters at sea. That's scary, Jill said. But just imagine their joy when the boats came home safely, Nana said. I can envision the captains and sailors watching through telescopes for the sight of their wives or sweethearts waving scars from those rooftops. Did anyone ever really see a Kelpie? Mm, not anyone I know. There's a boat over there. Jill pointed to a small fishing vessel that rose and dipped in the high waves. She turned to her grandmother. Can I come up here whenever I want? Of course you can, Nana said. This wind is chilly. Let's go down now. Holding Sarge in her arms, Jill carefully descended the steep stairway while Nana bolted the trap door lightly. We have to keep it sealed or it will rain, or it will rain in, she explained. Back in the kitchen, Nana made a pot of tea, then served it on the closed-in sun porch. Windows with flowered chintz curtains and matching window seats stretched along three walls. I could sit here and look out at the ocean all day long, Nana said, but at night we need to close the draperies on our windows that face the sea. She reached up under the valances and pulled a cord. A thick black curtain unfolded and descended from the from under the valance to the full length of one of the windows. It's a law. Any houses on the ocean must either keep their lights out or cover the windows completely. Why? Can they see our lights in Germany? Jill asked, trying to be silly. No, but the German submarines could be patrolling these waters, Jill. We don't want to give them any help in identifying landmarks. What about the lighthouse? I thought they turned all the lighthouses off for the duration of the war. 
Some have been turned off, but not all. Ours is one of the few lighthouses that's still working, Nana explained. They're markers not just for ships, but for airplanes too. We're so far from big cities or anything important that it's been allowed to stay on, although it's dimmer now. After tea, Jill helped clean the kitchen, then said, I'm going to take a walk into town to see Wendy. There's a bicycle in the garage if you'd like to use it. A bike? Thanks, Nana. Jill dropped the dish towel on the counter and headed for the side door, which opened to the backyard. I hope the tires are okay, Nana said. I had them patched and pumped up when I heard you were coming. You can't get new tires because of the rubber shortage. Nana stood in the doorway with Sarge rubbing her legs against her legs and Jill walked toward the garage. Sometimes you can see the whales breaching from here, she said, pointing to the east. Jill shaded her eyes and gazed at the ocean. Usually you'll see them later in the season, Nana said, but keep on the watch for them. It's a beautiful sight. She went outside to a water pump and filled a watering can. Sarge and I plan to do some work in our victory garden this morning. Families everywhere were planting victory gardens to help supplement the food that was going to the troops. See, I planted peas and tomatoes over there, she pointed, spattering Sarge with a watering, <laughs> spattering Sarge with a watering can. He shook himself and raced off. Jill laughed and dashed for the garage. It was a great day for a bike ride. She found the bicycle, a girl's blue Columbia, pulled it out, and checked the tires. She rolled up the legs of her pants a bit so they didn't get caught in the chain. Just follow this road to the four corners at Main Street and turn left, Nana called. Jill hopped on the bicycle. See you later, she waved and headed down the dirt road. She pedaled to town under a cloudless sky. The freshening southerly breeze played with frothy waves in the harbor. Gulls soared and called to each other. The war seemed far, far away.